bad boy. All right, we are back. And as I mentioned before, big holiday weekend coming, which means summer has officially arrived. Dr. Eli Karam is with us. He is with the Kentucky Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. And first of all, Dr. Karam, welcome to the show once again. Good to see you today. Thank you for tackling such tough issues. We have an email here. Are you okay with now me reading let's this? Let's do it, yeah. Well, let's Sorry. do it. Let's pop it up on screen real quickly here and get everybody on board. I think we can all relate to this if you're a parent. Uh, I'm stressing out about the end of school next week. I have three active kids, 13, 10, and 8. I'm trying to plan for the next few months and build some structure into summer. Unfortunately, my husband is hands-off and rarely participates in any planning. Do you have any suggestions, Donna? I would think this is a common issue because summers are tough. Everyone's trying to juggle who drives who where, who pays for what, how much you're going to let them do, what's too much. Right. It's so the time of go. year, right, that yeah. the kids are rejoicing about. They're getting ready. To, if they haven't ended, they're going to end. And then parents are freaking out because, <laughs> yes. you know, they have a lot of, uh, from having uh, built-in daycare, depending on how old your child is, uh, from the hours of 8 to 3, and now they're going to have to fill up that time. So yep. we got some tips, and we can help you out. Uh, thank you for the email. You can send in all your emails to uh, kmft at insightbb.com, by the way. All right, so first of all, you gotta, you got to think about this 12-week period. You have to put it on the calendar. So many people do not schedule, John. So you, you need to lay out what the summer is going to look like, June, July, and, and the first part of August there, and break it down into not only as much for what the kids have going on, but what the parents have going on. For some many families, especially two-income families where mom and dad work, uh, you have to juggle your work schedule around to get the kids where they need to be, or at least make other accommodations. So you want to mask calendar where everybody knows what's everybody go what's going on including the kids if they're old enough they need to know that they just can't you know request mom and dad take them here or take them there they got to work around the master schedule so I have a, a calendar many people put it in a convenient spot or on the fridge or somewhere they can be added to that's step number one step number two you want to set a kind of appropriate jobs and responsibilities thinking about the age of your child again developmentally appropriate so what you're gonna ask a teenager to do around the house we were talking before the show you can have your son your 14 year old to cut some grass do some stuff sure uh, but uh, if they're not old enough to work you still want them kind of contributing adding some structure to their day so you want uh, a list of what you think is appropriate for them to do around household chol household chores or something like that. Uh, then another tip, you, you really want to include them no matter what the age in the planning when possible. One way to do that, uh, let's say you're thinking about certain activities for your uh, youngster, your grade school age child. So maybe you have uh, an art class, an enrichment program, um, uh, some type of summer camp. You want to present the child with three options that you, or if you're working with your co-parent, your co-parent thinks are good alternatives and then let the child pick. So in the back of your mind, you know all three of those are okay with you, but you're enfranchising your child to have some say in it. They've got some skin in the game. That's right, <laughs> which is if they own it, they're going to sure. probably get more out of it. The last thing you want to do is spend your time and money or resources on something you think your child is not going to enjoy, or worse, drags their, drags their feet into. Um, uh, another tip is um, wanting to ig do not ignore the intellectual stimulate a stimulation during summer break, meaning, look, your child deserves a break, especially if they've been a good student, or maybe if they're not such a good student. So that's normal, but the idea, you'd be surprised that uh, the brain can kind of switch off in a 12-week period. So you want something that is going to keep them going. Again, a way to incentivize them. So maybe uh, it's a series of books. The expectation is that you read a book. And some schools, uh, even very early on in middle school and even before now, are going to have summer reading anyway. Uh, so many times it's a requirement of uh, where you're getting your child educated, but if it's not, find a way, again, the key to turn them on to it. If they have some ownership over it, if it's something that they're interested in, uh, a book, a class that combines maybe creativity with some uh, either math or science. Many people send their kids to, I'll be sending my five-year-old to a, a math or a science camp uh, in the sense that making a science fun or making some uh, non-traditional classroom experience is part of the summer. And, and the last tip, and, and this is really an important one, you really have to be on the same page with your parent because this is where your co-parent, this is where, you know, the what we call the second shift. If you're a parent that feels like you're doing everything at work and then coming home and doing everything for your children, even if you are the one organizing, you want a co-parent that is going to help carry the load. Uh, and in the summer, uh, it's very easy for things to be so focused on what the kids and what the kids are doing. As I've said a lot of times, John, over the last couple months, 
if you're in a relationship, if, if you're great uh, co-parents, but you're not working on the couple relationship, it's not going to work. So in that summer, you got to have something for you too, and that's blocking out time. Uh, that is using a babysitter, uh, and that is also uh, planning something just for you and, and your partner uh, in addition to your kids. I think that last tip to me would seem to be the most important because uh, as a parent, the last thing I want is to be blindsided by some activity that I'm not even aware of. So I think you sit down, maybe have a family meeting with the kid and say, hey, here's what we're planning for you. Make sure everybody's nodding and yes, we're okay. And hey, can you help me with the ride back from practice? Uh, I'll get, some, you know, I'll try to take them or whatever the case may be. True. Yes, uh, very true, and also the, 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 why the unified uh, co-parenting front is important because uh, maybe if your son or daughter kind of tells you, oh, but mom said I could do this, or how about I do this, and then they kind of create a split between you and your co-parent. Well, dad said I could, and then that, that causes tension between the parents. So you want to make sure uh, you're on the same page with your partner, and uh, it's kind of a transparent, open plan. That's why the calendar's good. Everybody sees it. Uh, many families have a family meeting at the beginning of the week, so if the parent, if the, if the child needs a special accommodation it's there it's not a last minute thing and the parents usually if they're, they're if their child is uh, being appropriate doing what they should they're going to probably work out and try to accommodate requests now another thing we get asked about a lot is teenagers what do I how much structure versus freedom do I give my teenager and I think it all depends on the maturity level of your child and if they're working or not um, but teenagers are a whole different beast in the sense that uh, their structure looks different uh, what a lot of parents fear is that my son or daughter, my teenage son or daughter is going to be in front of a screen all summer. They're going to be on the computer. They're going to be playing video games. So how do I get structure in that? And for lots of uh, teenagers, maybe it's not a camp. Maybe it's an athletic. We were talking about your son is going to go to a lacrosse camp. So maybe it's an athletic event. Uh, maybe it's some type of uh, structured youth activity. Uh, but you got to get some type of structure no matter how old your child is. The Kentucky Association of Marriage and Family Therapists, what other issues do you tackle? I know there's many. Sure. But we talked before about blended families. We talked yes. about taking care of some elderly folks yes. in your family, mom and right. dad. What other issues do you handle? Uh, marriage commonly? and family therapists, and again, remember, there's going to be over uh, 400 of them in Kentucky, and many of those uh, centrally located here in, in Wave Country. They are going to work with you in your whole systemic context. So they're going to look at you from a relational point of view, prior to prioritizing strength and health, issues any point on the family life cycle. Uh, perhaps you're getting out of a relationship. Perhaps you're just getting in one and deciding, is this the right for me? Per per perhaps you're dealing with issues in the family which you grew up in. Uh, all various issues that we have tackled and will tackle throughout the year in these segments. Best thing to do, go to www.therapistlocator.net. You're going to put in your zip code and it is going to uh, produce a series of licensed marriage and family therapists in your area. You click on the link. Many of them will have personalized website sites, which you can learn a lot from a therapist by their website. But any licensed marriage and family therapist, LMFT, is going to be able, John, to talk to you on the phone for five or ten minutes, make you feel comfortable. And, and you should feel comfortable. And if it's not the right one, Find another one, and, and, and again, you, it's, it's, it's up to you to kind of find the right fit, and uh, it's also okay if you need a tune-up during the summer. Some people wait till school comes. Right. Go during the summer. Get a head start. All right, Dr. Eli Karam, for a man who helps out so many families in our area, I hope you and your family enjoy your long little holiday break, okay? Yeah, I'm planning on just relaxing. <laughs> you yeah. deserve that. All right, All right coming up, we're going to help you enjoy your break a little bit more because you could be the winner of $25,000. George Jenkins is here. Timax True Home Value will be right back. Wave 3 listens. <laughs> 